then again, I see all the continents. It looks like the whole globe has been flattened out before me, and I can see all the continents, and they are in this scarlet red color. As the 90s began, the world saw an increase in severe weather. The media reported more flooding, hurricanes, earthquakes, more natural disasters than ever before. Mother Nature was often credited for these occurrences. But a lone voice crying out from a small Georgia town disagreed. She had the gift of seeing heavenly visions, and assisted by helper George Collins, they told people of messages and visitations from Jesus and the Blessed Mother. Please, dear children, you must stop offending God. It was at that moment that a very dark substance that flowed very slow came out of her left eye. They told of the great love and mercy God has for each one of us. His way is a way of love one another as I love you. Is, is a way of sacrificing himself for us in, in beginning with just going from God to human to help us. And they told of coming chastisements if the world did not turn back to God. I heard our Lord say something to me which I'll share with you. My children, you will see yourselves as you are. These are the messages, visions, and prophecies delivered to housewife Nancy Fowler in the town of Conyers, Georgia. They are an invitation to the entire world, every nation, every race, every religion, to find out about the living Son of God and His presence in the Eucharist. They are an invitation to stop ignoring God. As the Blessed Mother sheds tears of blood, America and the world are given yet another wake-up call to the love of God and the Conyers prophecies. He does everything for our goodness, for our welfare. He permits everything for our goodness, for our welfare. God cannot do anything in hate. He cannot do anything in revenge. There's none of those exist in God. We know from our own teachings that he's perfect love. They're, they're, they're done, so everything that is permitted is done through love, his merciful love. I think so much we need to reflect upon the mercy of God. Think about in your own lives how many times God has forgiven you and how many more times he's going to forgive you. What a merciful God we have. He told us in one of the messages that he revealed himself completely to us in the cross. I found that profound, that if he's revealing his nature to us in the cross, how could that be? But if we think about it, I, I've thought about that, thought about it, tried to pray about it. And the, the Jesus that I've come to know through these apparitions, through Nancy, and the apparitions and the messages. He's a very, very gentle, kind, loving God. But it appears that he's, a, he's the God that sacrifices himself always out of love for the one he loves. I mean, he showed us that in the cross. His love is not a love of emotion only. It's a love that bears the fruit uh, of love when it's sacrificed or when it when it has to give up what it wants or, or suffer for the one it loves. So if we love like him, uh, then we're gonna love it. we're gonna love a love that sacrifices ourselves for the one we love, for God, for our neighbor. And I never I never really understood that. Uh, you know, how could he reveal himself completely in the cross if he reveals a love that loves to the, to the extent of sacrificing himself, his own life, that's powerful. If we look at the cross, it looks gory, it looks repulsive. But if we look at the love behind the cross, it's beautiful. 
I was, I said, my Lord, please, if it's your will, may I understand why I am seeing these two images, the, seeing the resurrected Jesus in light, and then this other image in light that's suffering, looking upward. And, and as I said, back and forth, I would see this. Because it was repeated over and over and over and over again, I got the sense our Lord wants to, us to understand and take these words deep within our heart and really believe these words. To take these words and to personalize these words within you. I am living and I died for you. I kept thinking, my goodness, I am living and I died for you. What more do we need to understand? There's no love in all the world greater than the love of God for each of us. I heard these words. My children, will you not love me. You know, we'll all stand before the same Creator, and He's going to say to us, when have you passed me by? Was that golf game really more important than you just stopping and visiting me or, or skipping Mass because you want that extra hour of sleep? Think about it. You're, you are making your eternity now. It's your life, the life that God has longed to you. It's for His glory and honor do we live. That's the way it's meant to be. Not for our own being, but there's riches waiting for us, endless ones. No one can love you the way God does. No one comes close to it. He's so gentle, he's so loving, he's so patient. Endless patience and forgiving. When I struggle with forgiveness and I can look at the crucifix and it's glory and light and I've just blown it again another day with another person or another situation, he's ready to forgive. Why are we not imitating him? That's what the message is about. It's not coming from me. He said it first. He came before us to show us the way. We are missing it. Wake up. Wake up America to Jesus. Do you remember that? Some people may remember that message. Wake up America. Wake up world to Jesus. Wake up, we're sleeping. We're missing the gifts that are before us. You are making your eternity every step you take, every thought you have, every word, every action. Why build it only on temporary riches? December 31st, 1990 message, I call and I call and I call. Nancy saw a suffering face of Jesus. Jesus said, the time has come for my justice. My children do not believe in my justice and they shall see my justice. I call and I call and I call and my children do not respond. They block their ears. My precious daughter, you see my suffering face? Look at me. You see my love. Where are my children? Where are my children at the Mass? Where are my children? I tell you they are seeking their own selfish selves. How much I have tolerated. Every one of my commandments violated, abandoned. Murder, murder, murder. Murder is in their hearts. They murder the unborn. They murder the born. They murder the old. They murder the young. They murder the well. They murder the disabled. They slander my name, mock me, spit on me, throw my words away. My precious daughter, you see my suffering face? Look at me. You see my love. My children, where have they gone? You are ready to speak my words, and there is no one here to listen. And I just received these words. My worldly children do not know me. It is my children who seek me from the depths of their hearts that know me. You cannot serve two masters. If you are busy serving one, you cannot know the other. Say to my children, reflect upon those words. He began to tell me, say these words. I want my children to realize the 
gifts that they are gathering are possessing them. Use your gifts, but be not possessed by them. My children, you have many riches, and yet you are very poor. Seek my heavenly gifts, then you are made rich. Then I could hear, reflect on the Beatitudes, live by these guidelines. Then after a little while I began to hear, you may possess wealth, but do not let wealth possess you. I began to hear, I desire to possess all my children. My children, do not be deceived, and let the false riches possess you. Is not my grace sufficient for you, my dear little children? Come. Come to me, my little children, and I will comfort you, all of you who mourn, who weep, who suffer. Then I'm given a, a series of visions of very quickly, many things. It is like watch, watching a film before your eyes. There was a young child in, the, in this room, and he had a lot of candy in his it looked like it could be his bedroom, just some room he was sitting on the floor, and he was gouging himself with all this candy. The, then the, I could only see the back of this tall man, which I understood to be the father, and he came into the room. And he was telling the child that he didn't want the child to, to, to get sick and he should stop eating the candy. But the father didn't take the candy away. And then again the vision came back, again the same child is there again, and again he begins to eat again the, sa the same candy that's there. Then the father, when he came in the second time, he told the son, I love you, and I do not want you to become violently ill. I'm going to take some of the candy away. When the father returned again to the room, again, the child again was eating the candy. This time, the father took all the candy away. When I heard the father said this, these words to the child, when you are well and you are listening, I will return some of the candy to you. You'll not be able to have the same amount that you originally had. I love you and I must help you manage this candy because you have let this candy manage you. And all the time in that vision, I can only see the top, the back of the father. I wasn't permitted to see the front view of the father. The boy then sat down in the room without the candy and was sad and he looked sick too. If our kingdom is of this world, he said his kingdom is not of this world, then we will live in a worldly way. We will live not for him as being our king, but our, we will live for worldly things, the things, the materialism, power, money, uh, sex, the gods of this world. That's where we'll spend our time and effort. Um, a priest once told me that where you spend your time, uh, your, 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 where you, what you work for, your effort, and where, where you spend your money I can tell you a lot about where your gods are. Um, what, what do you worship? What do you offer your gifts of money, time, and effort to? If, uh, do we offer our gifts of money, time, and effort to our king, is it God or, or is it worldly things? You know, I guess the message coming from Conyers, I would like to, to help everyone to understand and know, is that Jesus is alive. God is alive. He lives today. He lives within us. He's everywhere. You know, He is all knowing, all wise. He is truly living. He is light. He is love. He's peace. Seek the virtues of the heart of Jesus. Seek these virtues. Don't seek the ways of the world. God is truly alive. I saw another image that appeared near the ceiling. At first I think it, maybe it's a monk. And he's carrying something. And then he's hiding, going behind the cross. And every time that he would reappear, and then after several times, I began to see it looked like a slain lamb. And then I just, I didn't hear any words, but all of a sudden it's like I just understood 
I, that's Satan. He's trying to snatch the lamb. He's trying to, to, to snatch this sacrifice away from us. Then again, another image like that. Again, Satan is attacking. He wants to take the heart of Jesus away from us, the Eucharist. You know, it's such a deception was the disguise, too, because it had that of like a, like a monk, you know, outfit on or with a head covering. Our Lady reminded me of a visit that she had made to me on August 22nd. In obedience to the Mother of God, I'd like to share that vision with you and the message of that vision. Our Lady explained to me the word ship today, what it meant. It's the church. On August 22nd, the Mother of God appeared radiant in white veil and dress, very beautiful. She appeared standing on top of a pillar, a column. This mystical figure of Our Lady then moved off this pillar and walked and stood next to the sacred heart of Jesus picture. As she did this, these words I heard. The ship is going through rough waters. Then I watched this mystical figure of Our Lady seem to merge into through the sacred heart of Jesus. And I heard these words, stay close to my son and stand firm with him. Then a life-size mystical figure of Our Lady then vanished through a closed door. The words together, the ship is going through rough waters. Stay close to my son and stand firm with him. At the consecration for Mass, and I saw a, in a mystical form, a spirit form, an angel appear behind the altar, beautiful angel, majestic, all in white, with a white robe, and, and then I saw this beautiful white chalice, again mystical, and, and the angel was carrying the chalice upward. As the, cha as the chalice went upward, it went into the direction that at the early part of the Mass, I had seen a very old man with a white beard appeared high up in the ceiling, uh, up on the wall near the ceiling. And then, my, and then right after that vision vanished, there appeared a man in the white robe who I've come to know as Jesus. And then that image vanished of Jesus. And that's the direction in which the angel was carrying his chalice up. And uh, I didn't understand the vision when I first seen it. And then I saw as the, I saw the chalice without the angel, and I saw the chalice come back down. It was all pure white, it being radiant light. And I saw the chalice reach the level of the altar, and then it seemed to vanish. Then, not even a split second later, the priest was holding up the real chalice, and the lights just seemed to be into the real chalice. And the chalice, as the priest was holding up and saying the words, in him, through him, and with him, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And those are the words that were being pronounced by the priest as a chalice, then his chalice was bursting in light. You know, it's, I think it's, it's a message there for us. It's, it, the Mass, the sacrifice, the holy sacrifice, the Mass, it's an ongoing memorial of Christ's passion and death. It's Jesus. You know, here is the chalice going up, and, and what was explained to me that, that that's being offered to the Father, the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus is a sacrifice being offered to the Father. You know, he's blessing it. The, he's blessing the sacrifice. It's being brought down for us to partake of this holy sacrifice and so that we should be in a state of grace and ready to, re to enter into the Mass and to, the, and to receive Jesus with our hearts, giving our hearts completely and totally to Him. My beloved children, behold the memorial of my sacrifice. Behold the sacrificial Lamb. Come unto me with repentant and humble hearts. Come to the table of my new covenant, ready to receive me, Partake of my body and blood in the state of grace. Please, partake of my body and blood in the state of grace, in total abandonment to your will, to my will. Separate not your state of grace and your surrender. Come before me in this way. Nancy got a message of November 16, 94. Uh, she was praying the rosary. Jesus said, My children, you have divided my church. The divisions are far and wide and many. You have broken your relationship with me, and you've done this of your own free will. 
I have repeatedly warned you in my merciful love to cease from your sinful, wicked ways. I have warned you in my merciful love, divide my church and I will divide your land. You have failed to listen repeatedly. I tell you I will strike the earth in many places. I will continue to pound the earth. You will see the very land that you walk upon will divide into great gullies in many places. You, you have divided my mass. You have gone too far. You have murdered and murdered and murdered. You have gone too far. You have trampled upon my word everywhere. You have gone too far. You fail to see. You fail to understand. You fail to care about my merciful love for you. Oh, my children, I cannot continue to allow one soul after another to be damned for all times into the bowels of Hades. It is my merciful love that I must stop you. It is my merciful love that I must stop you from running into the hands of Satan. You were created to be with me forever, with me in paradise. The damned souls are too numerous for, to tell you, for you will not understand my merciful love. My children, I come to you. I lived among you as a man, and now you do deny my divinity. You deny my real presence in the consecrated bread and wine. You make a mockery uh, and desecration of the very sacred gift I have given to you. Come back to me with repentant hearts, begging of my mercy. Do not think that more earthquakes and great waves and volcanoes and loss of lives and property and health are not coming. More and more tribulations are awaiting you if you do not return to me. Children, will you not see my love for you? You are forcing my hand. The cup overflows. Help one another. Love one another. Forgive one another as I love and forgive you. I bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let my children understand that the sign of the cross is a profession of your faith and must not be altered. With each blessing of the sign of the cross, you receive abundant graces. Make the sign of the cross often, professing your true faith in the Trinity of God. From what I've noticed working with Nancy these blessed all these, uh, these years, he, he's always merciful, always loving. He's corrected me many times. I've gotten in trouble. <laughs> I've done a lot of things I shouldn't have and done, haven't done a lot of things I should have. But when we come back and uh, ask him for his mercy, he will always give it. It's when we persist uh, that, that he has to bring us back with his justice. I received a message on September 11 and said, there's a false peace in the world, my dearest daughter. There I was shown one soldier after another, many, many soldiers. Every single soldier was oriental. They, had a, they looked like they had a steel or metal helmet on and they had things strapped over their shoulders. The look on their face caused terror within me. All I can say, the word that comes out so clear is they, they looked like they had no mercy within them. The words that I received, along with many visions. China is a real enemy. La China es realmente un enemigo. From China will come a great war. Do not trust China. Do not trust China. Do not trust China. I have heard there's a deadly trio. Yo he escuchado que hay una... Um, Trio mortal. The countries that I heard within my heart is China, Russia, and Korea. What I saw was, a, was an oriental woman appeared in my room life-size, and she cried, cried, and cried. It was later that week when I was driving in a car. I heard within my heart the Chinese woman was crying because her family was going off to war. There was another vision in which I saw many military troops on U.S. soil. Muchos 
tropas militares en nuestra tierra. I saw the shoreline. Vi la línea del, de la playa, del, de la costa. They were oriental soldiers. Eran soldados orientales. And there were many. I think it's so important now that we respond to Our Lady's invitation of love and peace and to come back to God now. I recall several years ago Our Lady said, do not disregard Russia. Um, the messages concerning China were well before anything has come to light about China or the testing, China successfully testing the atomic bomb. Those things had not been come to light when I received the messages. So when I received them, I didn't know what they meant. You know, God speaks to us in varied ways. And I, I don't claim to have a meaning for these, for these apparitions, of, particularly this one. But uh, I, I just wonder if God wasn't using, using symbols to represent nations and places. But that's something everyone will have to discern and pray about in their own hearts. What I, what I was shown was a, an oriental man the Oriental man appeared to, in the, to my left, I mean to my right. The Oriental man had eyes that, that seemed to be void of God. You know, you don't experience any love or peace or an emptiness, a void, a coldness. A, really, it terrified me to see this man's eyes. To the right of this, uh, to the left of this um, Oriental man appeared a polar bear. It, it was a white bear. It, it was the most unusual vision, I mean, to see a bear. And the bear was a fairly good size, and the, the oriental man seemed to be conversing with the bear. The bear seemed to be very passive, not, you know, I just was listening. Um, but then the bear just vanished. The polar bear just vanished. In its place appeared an Indian. The only Indian I knew, I felt it was an American Indian because the, he looked, the only Indians I was familiar with, the way he was dressed, was American Indian. And he had a little small tomahawk in his hand. And the Indian struck me as being full of pride, pride, you know, of might, of, of power, of self-assurance. Uh, um, I noticed an exchange taking place between the Oriental man and the polar bear, I mean the Indian. And for some time there was an exchange. And it, this seemed to be from the facial expressions, tension building. You know, and, and the encounter became less friendly. Then I saw them fight. They clearly were fighting for the tomahawk. And each and they were each had their hand on it and they were fighting for it. And the or and the American Indian was fighting with all his might. Finally the, the American Indian got hold of the tomahawk and struck the Oriental man above the bridge of his nose and the forehead. It was like a mighty, it looked like a mighty blow. We couldn't hear sound. But you know what? The Oriental man didn't even flinch. He didn't move as if nothing touched him. I was totally shocked at seeing this. Then moments later, the American Indian struck a second time. This time was above the ear on the head of the Oriental man. Again, the same reaction, no reaction. As if it didn't even occur. And it clearly looked like a big gash to us. The Oriental man regained his hand on the tomahawk, and clearly both were fighting for this tomahawk. With all the might, and still throughout this, the American Indian looked so self-assured, so full of pride, as if the Indian had all the power and might. And I thought, you don't know who you're fighting, I don't understand. The Oriental looks much more, much more in control, much more powerful than you. But as if the Indian was totally unaware of that. As they continued to fight, I watched the Indian grow weaker and weaker. Still, he went down fighting. He went down, all the way down, and he didn't come back up. And then moments after that, I was shown, we were shown, a mushroom cloud. It was the biggest mushroom cloud I've ever seen. And then to the right, of, on the top of, upper part of the mushroom cloud, there was a face. The face and neck could only be sh seen. The mouth of the woman or person was wide open, like she was screaming in utmost pain. And you couldn't hear sound, 
but all the facial expressions looked like she was excruciating pain and perhaps shock and just tormented. Then right after that, it was like God had put me in a, a barren land. I don't know where it was. It could be a place where I've seen geography that looked like uh, parts of Alaska perhaps, or there was not any vegetation or very little, and, and, the, and way off in the distance were mountains. I could hear a mighty voice say, as if it was coming from within me with the external vision. Two of you have been given a tremendous grace from God to see into the future through the eyes of God. Now you have the responsibility to pray as you've never prayed before. God is inviting us to change. Change the way we are living. Change our priorities. They're not right. We're not balanced. No human being is balanced if, if we're living more in the world than for God. We've got to be a balanced person. No one can claim to be balanced if there's no time for prayer. If you look at your life, you have time for recreation, time for work, then God's got to be in there. Time for God. None of us, as we, as we are breathing and living today, know how long we will live. We do not know when we will be called back to the Creator. It is not a statement of fear. It's a statement of really of great joy, of, of, uh, to, to, to be with the resurrected Jesus, to, to be in a, with Him forever in paradise. That should be our primary goal. So I, I don't look at even natural disasters that may be coming with all these, these hurricanes that seem to be developing in one storm after another. Perhaps these, are, these can be interpreted or looked at in our own lives as messages from God. You know, that He would even permit these things to happen. Maybe He's inviting us again through nature. Change, my children. Change. Come back to me. One day I was shown a mystical steps. The steps were just like this, went down, just a staircase. And I looked at this vision on seeing the steps. I said, my Lord, I don't understand this vision. And then I could hear within me, this was everyone's spiritual journey on earth. I looked at the steps again that were still present before me. I said, the steps was everyone's spiritual journey? And the Lord explained to me, that we're either going down the steps or we can go climb up. It's very easy to go down, descend the steps. It's less work. Oftentimes, the pace is a lot faster. It takes less effort. But there's, when you go down, there is darkness waiting for you at the bottom. Or you can make your ascent upward. The climb is often slower. The pace much more difficult. But there's light waiting for you at the top. There is light at the top of the steps. And that's our spiritual journey, every step that we live. We have a free will. We have a God that's given us a free will who loves us unconditionally. He says, you have the power to mock me, to curse me, to hate me. You have the power to walk away from me. Or you have the power of eternal love to me. You are making your eternity now. Every step you, you take, every moment you live, you are making your eternity. The decision is yours. You have a free will. You can make that climb down. You can descend down. If you want to go into darkness, and death waits for darkness. Or you can make that ascent up, and light of Christ will be waiting for you. America, pray. Pray, pray, and pray. Return to God. Return to the sacraments. Live the gospel message. Our Lady is beseeching us. She is a messenger sent to help us. Go back to God now and pray. Sacrifice. You know that we have grievously hurt and offended God by our sins. So make acts of reparation. Make sacrifices. You know, people get mystified by the word sacrifices. For me, it's a simple word. It's an offering to God. Jesus continued to cry as he looked upon the city. I do not know what city this is, but throughout the vision, 
He continued to cry. A stream of tears came out of his left eye. I was able to see Christ very clearly in this vision. It could be any city because there were many tall buildings. The southern border of the United States looked changed. I don't know my geography very well, but it looked like it was awful smooth. While the world continued to celebrate the end of the Cold War and communism, this message was published in the January 1993 journal. Do not think that communism is dead. I tell you, it is on the rise. Jesus also said, Do not trust Russia. I tell you, do not be fooled by a false peace. Sin breeds sin. If you choose that dark is a sin, then so shall you be in darkness. Then you shall crawl upon the earth like serpents. You choose this way of life with your own free will. Violence will beget more violence. Conflicts will turn into wars. You battle with each other over laws that you create apart from me. Then so will the earth tremble in many places. The earth will divide. The earth will divide and take away your riches. Some of you will die suddenly without, you'll have no warning. The clock continues to tick. The hour is rapidly approaching when one disaster after another will befall you. There'll be fighting everywhere. There'll be famine and polluted water in many places. Great waves will crash upon your shores and you will experience cold when you should experience warmth. Flood waters will increase in many places. Fire will be upon the earth. You will think that the heavens and the earth have rebelled against you. The clock continues to tick. Know that all I, have I told you and more will come to pass. Your false gods will fail you. One day you will have money, and the next day you will not. One day you'll have many riches, and the next day you will not. I would like to tell you I was given the vision at this moment. I saw a lot of people gathered together, and they looked like they were panic-stricken. And they were waving something in their hand that resembled, looked like paper. But they were scurrying in every different direction, just much chaos. I've warned you of wars, of natural disasters. Famine and droughts and floods and epidemics and sufferings of every kind. And you fail to understand that God wants you to amend your ways. My children, the further you walk from God, the more you become a slave. Your very freedom is being taken from you. Take to heart these words and return to God. I saw many images today during the visit of Our Lady. Again, the continents are all in red. It seemed as if the continents were shifting, they were changing, they were being altered. I remember once, a couple years ago, I heard if you choose to be a slave to sin, then so shall you be a slave. On more than one occasion, I've seen that something that looks like something I would see under a microscope. And they're changing shapes, but very quickly. Something that I would think would take a long time to do, they're changing shapes. I got the sense they were, they were bacteria or viruses, or I don't know what they were, but that's what the sense I had. Further explanation was printed in the March 1994 journal. Jesus said, What I just revealed to you is new viruses and new bacteria will come. They are on their way. Something that looked like a credit card and was shown that something with like holes in the credit card were being burnt in the credit card. Like a puff and then it went away. There was something that was very bright and red and it was coming out of the water. Don't have any idea what that was. But it, it was coming towards the town. If you take a sheet, a bed sheet, and you and you make air go under it and just and just flutter it in the air, it'll make a ripple effect like so. It was like someone was doing that to the land. Many many visions of waves, a great body of water. Looking into this immense body of water, it's terrifying. I don't see the top of the wave. It's just like looking into the middle of this immense forceful body of water. It's very it's so terrifying. I'm only I only endure it. It seems just moments, and it's taken from me. Other times I have seen bridges, the, the, I can see just the base of the bridge in the water, um, and it's like concrete or something, but it's deteriorating, it's weakened. Other times I have seen a cable, 
a cable bridge about four years ago. I was shown this big cable bridge and a immense body of water, a great wave coming towards this bridge. Terrifying, there are cars on the bridge. The wave is going and hitting the top of that bridge onto, onto, the, onto the road. The cars are going in to the water. And the last message I'd like to share with you in May 11. My dearest daughter, the world is about to undergo a great shaking in every way. The lives will change in the twinkling of an eye. He's indicated if we don't thirst for his waters, then we shall thirst. She's seen visions of faucets with no water coming out. In the March 94 journal, we had a, a reference to, to this. Nancy saw what appeared to be an immense object that reminded Nancy of a meteorite. This was followed by a big face that Nancy did not recognize, which was looking down. And this was followed by a vision of the state of Florida in red and then the continents in red. The Blessed Mother was crying. My children will lose their riches and their health will deteriorate. The very soil they walk on will become unplentiful for long periods of time. The water they drink will become polluted. The atmosphere about them will be filled with radiation. There will be terrible skin diseases. The plague of cancer will increase. Emotional illnesses of every kind will stifle my children and ci cities of sin will become unbearable. My children will be terrified by the signs that are around them and the faith of all my children will be greatly tested to the point of almost breaking human endurance. It is a grace that I give you now to come back to me in love. The three days of darkness, I do believe in this reality. Yes, I have. It's a very, I was shown this vision of the three days of darkness, and I experienced it, a small form of it. You know, only your faith alone will get you through those days. I guarantee you that will be so. Faith alone will get you through those days. I would like to first share with you again the words from Our Lady. My dear children, in great love and joy I greet you. As your loving mother, I invite you, my dear little ones, to draw closer to God. I say to you, come closer. Again I say, draw closer to God. Only with the help of God can you resist the many temptations that come upon you each day my dear little children. As your heavenly mother, I intercede for you unceasingly before the throne of God. It is then a tear, a clear tear came out of her right eye. I desire for every soul to be united with God forever. She said, with a mother's pleading, I say to you, please, my dear children, you must stop offending God. You do not know what awaits you. Pray, pray, pray. My little ones, amend your ways and live for God. I don't know if I like the word that time is almost up or people are referring to end times. I don't see it because, because those to me imply a, a very hopeless situation. I see that something greater is awaiting for us. Um, I think that we'll have a great, we'll have a purification, be cleansed, and that there will be an era of peace awaiting us. But people will focus and stop at the, at the part of the purification. So I see it not as an ending, but as a new beginning. On July 24, 1994, the Blessed Mother said, A new heaven and a new earth are dawning, but first the old one will be destroyed. Fire will fall down from heaven, lightning will flash from one end of the sky to the other, and the earth will plunge itself into a darkness it has never seen. The world has chosen these punishments. 
tell the world I am mourning for the aborted children and for all the lost souls. Your sacrifices and prayers can change the course of history. It is up to you. For many years, Jesus, through Nancy Fowler, has asked us to return to God. He has called and called and called. When will we wake up to the messages delivered in Conyers? It was during this experience that I heard these words. It is imperative that man mends his ways. Listen well, dear little children. What will it take for us to listen and stop offending Jesus? In a twi and I heard in a twinkling of an eye, the world can change. Your world can change. And then the last thing I heard before the whole vision vanished was, Oh, my children, no one loves you like I do. How many tears must the Blessed Mother shed before we love God? Then again, like almost all the other 13s, I'm again shown a map of the world. All the continents total is in, are in red. Our Lady explained to me that the color red that I see represents suffering. To link to Nancy Fowler's website or to see other videos on the Conyers apparitions, log on to www.conyersvideos.com.